Jay, it was a lot of cats that grew up in R&B, especially during Bobby Brown's time period. Like you had a lot of the moguls in the, um, the industry head that was kind of hardcore, kind of tight that you had to make sure you was on point, you know, making sure your stuff was tight dealing with. And, you know, Chetty Riley was coming up and through that era. He came from that school of, you know, sharks out there. You got to, he was a young dude in the industry having to make sure he, so that, you know, that part of the game, a lot of them don't get the, um, that story doesn't get told about how they had to like, it was a head trip and young dudes with all that talent having to navigate all these sharks that saw dollar signs from them and how they had to produce, but then also keep their sanity, like, and what that did for them going forward later on when they start getting groups and stuff. So that story should be told too. That's a, you know, I think in terms of research, that's the, <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, you know, just tell us about the group's experience with that navigating the sharks. Yeah. That's, you know, man, that was a, you, like my dissertation spoke to that. That's what it was on how black males navigate inequitable power spaces. I looked at how black males navig navigate the classroom experience and also how black male artists navigate the industry. And I found that it's, it's four phases to that situation that all, everybody fit neatly into. And it was like the, you know, the, the trial and error phase, like when you first get into the industry, you know that there's a business side to it, but you think and as an artist, you know, the business side will kind of wrap itself around what I'm doing at, with my art. It'll kind of like the dots will be connected, but you know, we're wrong. You know, it's like the trial and error phase, right? And then once we start feeling like, hold up, you know, I've all of a sudden becoming from, I'm turning from an artist to a product maker. Something is weird with about this, you know what I'm saying? Like my art has now, as soon as I drop it, becomes product, becomes, you know, it's not art anymore. It's under the behest of a label. It's a commodity now that's out of my control. I'm just a baby maker of it. But mm -hmm. it's, you know, <laughs> and so then there's a peep game stage. And so the peep game stage is just that calibration point where you, where you had that um, trial and error you thought things were going to take care of itself and you realizing that though, not only will it not take care of itself, but the business part predominates the artistic side of things. You're on the conveyor belt <laughs> and um, along with your product, you're a human product. So now you peeping game on how that works. And you're trying to figure out a way to ride that wave now that you've entered this realm, um, and, but save face at the same time, play the game enough and save face at the same time to where you can go to sleep at night. But now you know that you're a product maker instead of an art maker. And so then, there's this new attitude phase where you, after you peep game and put a few of them jewels in your, your back, now you 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 um got a new attitude about what this is you're in, and now you're moving accordingly to those new dictates. And then the last one is experience is the best teacher. Um, you know, you have certain hardcore lessons that you take away from these experiences that you actually transfer over into your regular life. They become stalwarts and mantras in your own world. You know, like some people like don't conflate business situations with just hiring your friends you know don't mix those like certain people operate like that now because of the industry experience in real life they do that same thing when they're making moves they get into real estate and they'll hire somebody that they know is qualified before they hire somebody that's their friend on the, like they've learned that lesson they trend you know like me um at, at georgia state i came up with a program and um because i was in the industry, the one of the first things you do is you protect your intellectual property. You write a song, you get a copyright. Like, you know that. You know somebody oh, yeah. the joint real quick. Like, you know this. So I created a program at Georgia State, albeit that I was a student in a building. I was using my laptop. I wasn't using any resources. And two, I, I, I got my program um, copywritten, you know? And so that made the university, like the, the MO of a lot of universities is if you're in their area or the department, they'll take your program as theirs even though you're the engine for it, they'll put their name on it as if it's their stuff and they'll have the rights to it too. I was like, in my mind, like I'll be damned if I'm gonna end up going to like Cali somewhere and I, I wanna do my program and I gotta ask them for permission to run my program that I created, no. So it ended up forcing them to be a, a, a partner with me. Georgia State had to partner with me on that program, which elevated that program status even more from, from what I needed it going forward and stuff like that. But other than that, if I hadn't, uh, they would have taken my intellectual property under the auspices of me being like, you know, a student um, mm -hmm. in the ranks as opposed to me being a human being who came up with this dope program that they want to partner with, you know. And so that was something that I carried directly from the music industry in terms of my thought pattern and how to deal with that. And it carried over. So that's, so I'm saying there's other experiences of other artists who that same format, you know, like Tracy Lee, who was in my um, dissertation, his takeaway was so hardcore. Um, you know, experience being the best teacher, that the brother actually became an entertainment attorney 
on the heels of how he felt he was done. He needed to know his quest to know what this was supposed to be like drove him actually to notch it up, level up even higher and get a degree in that, specialize in that, you know what I'm saying? So he really went to the business of music business side and learned it in the, in the whole situation so he could help our other artists in the, in the coming up in the future, but better arm himself too. So that's a life move he made that, that was business um, centric pretty much. So yeah, yeah. I've, been, I've been trying to get Tracy on the show for a while. Honestly, that's my guy, man. Philly, Philly's own. Yes, sir. Who's spitting? 